This presentation explores the content distribution flow and tracking for the African Health Open Educational Resources Network. One of the goals of Open Educational Resources, often referred to by the acronym OER, is to increase the visibility and use of educational materials. In order to meet that goal, OER must have low barriers to access, be findable through a variety of pathways, be available in common file formats, and be traceable so that you know when, how, and how many people are accessing them. This last one is the most difficult. For this reason, the African Health OER Network pursues multiple distribution methods for the widespread availability of OER across the continent and the world. The OER produced through the network is distributed through multiple offline and online methods by the authoring institution, OER Africa Network Co-Facilitator, and the University of Michigan, the other network co-facilitator. The distribution workflow diagram shows the whole ecosystem. Now I will explore this chart more in depth, looking at the distribution outlets and tracking methods for each of the organizations. Let's begin with the authoring institutions. African institutions often encounter challenges with internet access due to high cost of bandwidth and power outages. This is why offline access is extremely important. At least one of the institutions installs copies of OER on the hard drives of desktop computers and student computer labs. Here's an example. Mr. Tom Ndanu, a lecturer from the University of Ghana Dental School, loaded several dental OER videos from the University of Michigan onto the computers in the dental school student computer lab. Currently, the only measurement we have of computer lab use is, is anecdotal and incomplete. At least one of the institutions distributes CD or DVD copies of individual OER to students enrolled in particular classes. Here's an example. In 2009, Professor Richard Adanu at University of Ghana Medical School distributed a CD with a total abdominal hysterectomy OER module to 19 fifth year medical students. Professor Adanu distributed the OER to students in two batches. He distributed to the first batch of students one week and to the other the following week. By the time Professor Adana distributed it to the second batch, some of those students had already received copies of the CD from their classmates in the first class. Here's another example. In 2010, Professor Adana distributed a DVD with four OER gynecology learning modules to all 80 second year medical students. The DVD contained three modules that were created by him and one that was created by Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Currently, the only measurement we have of CD-DVD distribution at the institutions is anecdotal and incomplete. Some of the authoring institutions have their own OER servers that host content developed by their instructors, staff, and students. Some of these are publicly available, and others are available only through the local area network due to bandwidth considerations. Here are some examples of institutional websites. University of Cape Town Open Content. Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology OER, University of the Western Cape Free Courseware. Some of the authoring institutions track the number of views or downloads of OER through their content management system or by using Google Analytics. For the most part, this information is currently shared and monitored only within the institutions. One exception is the University of Cape Town Open Content website, which displays the number of views and a five-star rating on each resource page. The authoring institution transfers a copy to OER Africa, who publishes it to additional channels. OER Africa links to all and hosts much of the OER developed by network participant on their server located in South Africa. OER Africa monitors online visitors to their website through two platforms, AW Stats and Google Analytics. AW Stats, which is built into the web platform, checks the number of visitors, unique visitors, page views, and bandwidth used. This is recorded for the whole health space as well as individual resources. Google Analytics tracks much of the same information as AW Stats, as well as the geographic information for visits, downloads, and referrals to the site. 
Every month, OER Africa prepares an internal report summarizing statistics for both analytic services. OER Africa shares this report with several partner organizations, including University of Michigan. Using RSS feeds from the website, OER Africa team sends descriptive information such as title, description, authors, link, license, keywords for the OER hosts to OER Commons. OER Commons is a website that people can use to search OER from many sources across a wide variety of disciplines. It doesn't host any content, but it points to resources hosted on other websites. On OER Commons, you can search by keyword and tailor your search by grade level, material type, media format, and conditions used. People can rate or comment on each resource. OER Commons uses Google Analytics to monitor site traffic and search patterns. OER Commons shares those statistics with some content providers, including University of Michigan. Also using RSS feeds, OER Africa sends descriptive information for all the OER hosts to the Global Learning Objects Brokering Exchange, known as GLOBE for short. Similar to OER Commons, GLOBE is a website that people can use to search OER. It doesn't host content, but links to content hosted someplace else. OER Commons also pushes its records to GLOBE. GLOBE does not make any of its analytics public. OER Africa uploads many of the video-based resources from the network to YouTube. YouTube is the most popular video streaming service for user-contributed content. YouTube displays the number of views on each video. OER Africa transfers the OER to University of Michigan, who publishes it to additional channels. In order to address bandwidth limitations, geographically dispersed users, and long-term preservation, University of Michigan, also known as UM, hosts duplicate copies of the Health OER from the OER Africa website on the Open Michigan website. UM uses Google Analytics to monitor website traffic and search patterns. Much of those analytics are currently private, but UM is exploring methods to make some of this data public. Through RSS feeds, UM sends descriptive information for the resources to OER Commons, who then sends it to GLOBE. Learning Registry is a project in progress, led by the U.S. federal government. Like OER Commons and GLOBE, its goal is also to make it easier to find educational materials across institutions and repositories. UM is working on a plugin for the Open Michigan website that would support the Learning Registry framework. UM uploads any video resources from the network that have a UM author or co-author to Blip TV. Similar to YouTube, Blip TV is an online streaming video service. In addition to hosting content, it can also push content to other video hosting services. Blip TV tracks the number of views per video by distribution channel. Blip TV pushes videos to YouTube. YouTube tracks the number of visits, likes, dislikes, and comments. YouTube also tracks the geographic distribution of visits. Blip TV also distributes video to two internet television services, Roku and Boxy. The videos, audio files, and textbooks are also added to Internet Archive. Internet Archive automatically creates streaming versions and downloadable versions in multiple formats. Internet Archive provides the number of downloads and user reviews for each resource. The Espresso Book Machine is a print-on-demand book machine. It prints 300-page books in 7 minutes at low cost. The textbooks from the network are added to the UM Espresso Book Machine catalog. UM internally tracks the number of books printed. UM is experimenting with adding the presentation slides and text documents from the network to SlideShare. SlideShare enables individuals to easily browse or embed documents. SlideShare tracks favorites, comments, downloads, views, and embedded access. Occasionally, UM prepares sampler DVDs with content from the network to distribute to people who may not be able to download large files online. So far, the number of discs made to date have been 200 for the annual PEPFAR meeting, 30 for the OER Africa convening meeting, 
and 15 across the University of Michigan. Aside from the number of disks created, it is difficult to tell how many people and how often the disk has been accessed. UM plans to add a tracking picture, pixel to partially measure access. UM is currently experimenting with converting some of the HTML-based learning modules for mobile distribution. UM is working on an initial prototype. Lastly, UM has initiated a partnership to distribute offline versions of the OER through eGranary. eGranary collects offline versions of electronic collections through a web crawler or removable media. eGranary then aggregates the collections and distributes them to servers to over 300 academic institutions in developing countries for access on their local area networks. As part of an effort to make our analytics transparent, UM recently began to develop public dashboards with stats from a variety of distribution outlets. There is a dashboard for Open Michigan overall and one for the African Health OER network is in progress. The authoring institutions, OER Africa and UM, continue to explore innovative methods to distribute and track usage of OER. Send your comments and questions about the network to healthoer at oerafrica.org.